Hello, happy Friday. Welcome to Inspirations by Terry. I hope everyone is doing well. Today I want to talk to you guys about I'm being restored. There are so many of us as believers that have um, gone astray, that have left or turned their backs on the Most High and His promises and try to do things our own way. Or we sold to our flesh and we thought um, we followed our hearts, so we say, um, and did things based on the way we felt or um, we call ourselves following our hearts. But how, how many of us know that the Bible says that the heart is wicked? There's no good thing in our heart. You know, it's continuously evil and that we cannot follow our hearts. We have to follow the word of the Most High Yahuwah, or the, the Most High Yahweh. We have to trust him in who he is and what his word declares and says to us. It's never about us. Never about us. It's always about him, his will, and his plan for our lives. Because all of us were created for a plan and a purpose to bring forth his kingdom that his will be done in heaven as it is on earth by using his children his vessels if you choose him that he has a good plan for your life and if you made mistakes and if you made messed up and you feel like how do i make this right or how can i um how can i get back all the things that it seems like I lost in sin or by making bad choices and um, doing things my way instead of keeping the laws of the Most High, His statutes and His commandments. How, do we, how does that work? The Bible tells us that if we seek Him with our whole heart, if we seek Him with our whole heart, we will find him. You have to make a decision to turn from doing things your way, making a mess or continuing to make a mess or make bad decisions and say, you know what? I tried things my way and, and look what I got. Not all bad. Some of them, I'm sure, some things we do our way are not all bad. Everything is not all bad. But is it the most highest perfect plan for your life? Or was that what you were intended to be doing or intended or what he intended for you to have by doing things your own way? Are you in a situation where you lack peace? And, you know, um, peace is not your portion you know, I think that's a clear indicator that you're out of the will of the Most High when you lack peace because he promises that if you have him, in him is peace. And when you have him and you're connected to him, peace will be yours. The situation may not be all perfect, but you will have peace. Another indication that you may be out of the will of the Most High is that nothing goes right. It just seems like, you know, things are going good for a little bit, a little bit. And then all of a sudden, here's another, another, you know, thing after another thing, after another thing, after another. It might be an indication that when I say thing, I mean a situation or some kind of bad thing, mishap. Might be another indication, not always. But it might be an indication that you're out of the will of the Most High. So I want to read in um, the book of Isaiah, verses 1. I want to read um, chapter 1. I'm sorry. I want to read chapter 1, verses 18 through 20. It says, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Most High Yahuwah. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be at, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, 
they shall be as wool. If you be willing and obedient, so there's a stipulation. You have to be willing first, and secondly, you have to be obedient. Ye shall eat the good of the land. If you're willing and obedient, he promised that ye shall eat the good of the land. He said in verse 20, But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. So, if you're willing and obedient, and you keep his laws and statutes and commands. He said, he promised, we shall eat the good of the land. So wherever, whatever situation we're in, whatever we're facing, it's going to be good because he promised in his word that we're going to eat the good of the land if we are willing and if we are obedient. And if we're not, he said, if we refuse and be rebellious and rebel, he said that ye shall be devoured with the sword. Well, what is the sword? In this story, he's talking about land. So he's saying if you rebel, that we will become food for our enemies. We will be there, we will be, and by their sword, we will be destroyed. We will be um the um we will be destroyed by their sword, by them killing us, and then we'll become their food. They will devour us and eat us up. Not metaphorically, but I mean not <laughs> Literally, but metaphorically, they will eat us up. We would be devoured. Like we'll get paid and never have money left over or not have money to save. Like we'll be devoured by our enemies, by the system, by the, um, by all kind of different things because we are not being obedient and we are not being willing to keep his laws, his statutes and commands. But he said, if we turn to him, if we, you know, we turn to him, that he will restore to us. We're going to go to um, the book of Joel, um, Joel 2, and we're going to start at, um, we're going to start at verse, verses, we're going to start, um, Joel 2, I'm going to do verses um, 12 and 13. It says here, therefore also now saith Yahuwah, turn ye even to me with all your heart. All your heart, not half. Give him all that you have. And with fasting, that means we have to turn down our plate. We have to um, we have to afflict our flesh, you know, because the Bible tells us that the flesh and the spirit are enmity against one another. They're not they're not friends and, you know, your, your, your flesh man doesn't want you praying, doesn't want you fasting, doesn't want you seeking the most high Yahuwah. Um, so you have to afflict your flesh. You have to fast, turn on your plate, bring your body into subjection, tell your body that, you know, I can control this vessel. I can honor the most high by turning down your plate and fasting. It gives you spiritual strength. It, um, gets the attention of the most high Yahuwah. It does a lot of things and, and it's good. So not only do we have to pray and fast and read our word, not only do we have to pray and read our word, we also have to fast as well. So I'm going to go again. It says, therefore also now said the Lord Yahuwah that ye even, that turn ye even to me with all your heart with and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. Cry out to the most high, allow him to know the desires of your heart. And he will answer you. And it says, number 13, the verse 13 says, And rend your heart, tear your heart, pour your heart, and not your garments, and turn unto Yahuwah, for he is gracious and merciful. He's slow to anger and of great kindness and, we, and repented to him of all your evil. Right? Repent of all your evil. And then we're going to drop down to verses 25 through 26. So if you turn to him and you and you turn to him with all your heart, with fasting, with mourning, and with weeping, and you, you know, you tear your heart, pour your heart out to him. He says in verse 25 of the same chapter in Joel, he says, And I will restore to you the years 
that the locust hath eaten the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. He sent those that army of devourers because you were you rebelled against him. But he said that if you return and repent, that he will restore to you the years. I mean, how many years do we feel like we have lost and we have missed the mark and we have lost family situations, um, jobs, finances, all kind of things that these worms have come and devoured, right? And he said, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of your Praise the name of Yahuwah, the Most High, that have dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. He said, my people shall never be ashamed. So even when you were doing your thing out here, the things and situations that you lost through sin by doing your own thing, and it has caused and brought shame to you, he said, if we would turn to him with our whole heart, with weeping, with fasting, and with mourning, that he will restore to us all the years, not some, he said all the years that the canker worm, the caterpillar, the pommel worm has eaten and devoured from us, and we shall eat the good of the land. How many of you are ready to eat the good of the land? How many are, of you are ready to be the head and not the tail, above only and never beneath? He promises that we shall reap the benefits. There are benefits to being obedient to the Most High Yahuwah. There are benefits to keeping his words, his statutes, and his commands. But it's up to you. If you are willing, you have to first be willing. And secondly, he wants your obedience. Not to traditions of men. Not to what's popular in the mainstream, not to what's going on and everything's doing, everybody's doing this and everybody's doing that. No. Obedience to his word. Because it's his word that will never fail. It's his word that endures to all generations. It is his word that it promises to abide and that cannot lie. That cannot lie. If he said he's going to restore, if he said that he, he can do it or he will do it, he can do it and he will do it. It's up to you. So today, if your life is all in disarray because of your own doing, because you chose to not walk in obedience to the Most High, I challenge you to turn, repent, ask for forgiveness, cry out to the Most High Yahuwah, ask him to restore your family, ask him to restore your finances, ask him to restore relationships, restore your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, to, to not be patterned after the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And how do you renew your mind? By getting into his word, by allowing the Holy Spirit to be our lights, to be our lamp, to guide us to paths of righteousness and not paths that are, are, are um, of, the, of the world, the patterns of the world. And what is the world? Anything that's not going, anything that's against what the um, Most High is saying. It's easy to compromise because everyone's doing it. It's hard to walk according to the will of the Most High Yahuwah. Not hard and like it's grievous, but it's hard because not many people are doing it. So you might find yourself on a path alone until he sends you, you know, um, reinforcements or some friends or whatever. But it's not going to be a crowded path because he tells us in his word that very few will be the, there to find everlasting life. They're very few. He said, broad is the way that leads to destruction. Narrow is the way that leads to life eternal. And we know what narrow is. It's not a big space. It's very narrow and it's hard to get in that narrow place. 
But if you want peace, and if you want to eat the good of the land, and if you want to, um, if you want to ensure a place for you in the kingdom, be willing, be obedient, and keep his laws, his statutes and commands. If you don't know what his laws is, let's start with the Ten Commandments. Let's start there. And he'll speak to you. He left and sent us a comforter, the Holy Spirit that leads us and guides us. If we, if we seek him, the Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us to all truth. I ask you to be blessed. Um, if you came into the room, like the video. A lot of you don't, even though I say it. It doesn't hurt to like the video. Um, comment, share, subscribe, be blessed. And remember that the Most High is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. If you seek the Lord, you will be rewarded in the land of the living. Okay? Be blessed and take care. I'll see you on my next video. Bye.